Hi, I'm Teo Nicolakis with Audioholics, and in this episode, I'll be talking about room correction profiles, what they are, and when to use them to elevate your audio experience. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our Audioholics channel here on YouTube. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, please leave your comments or questions below. So let's get started. Room correction profiles. What are they and when to use them to elevate your audio experience? So what's a room calibration anyway? Well, it's important to remember that the speakers and our rooms work together as a single ecosystem or organism to reproduce the audio experience that we hear. Room correction systems then attempt to address the anomalous interactions between the speakers and the room, like too much bass or boomy bass. And what's a calibration profile? Well, when you run a room correction measurement, your system generates what's called a calibration profile, and that's a single set of settings for speaker distances, basically your primary listening position, crossovers, frequency response curves, sometimes phase, and bass response. And there are some times when having just one calibration profile isn't enough. And let me give you some common examples. The first might be if you have a sweet spot that you like to sit in and listen to, whether it's the first row or right in the middle of the couch, and then you have guests and all of a sudden, uh-oh, I've got to move over to a side couch, over to the left seat, or I've got to go into the second row of my theater area, or I want to expand the sweet spot to make it a little better for everyone. Second use case might be when you want to have different base settings like music versus movies. Hey, this particular genre of music, I want to have slightly more bass. If I'm listening to movies, I want to have maybe a 6 or a 10 dB boost in the bass region. I could have day or night settings, or again, um, for particular musical genres, or perhaps I just want to have a house curve. You want to have different speaker configurations. Gee, I've got a two-channel setup, so when I'm running two-channel um, music, I want to run those speakers full range. Or perhaps, hey, I'm doing music, but I want to have the subs instead they're cro instead of crossing over at 80 hertz, I want to cross them down to 60 hertz because I have uh, full range speakers and I want to do something a little bit different with music. I have changes to the room layout. Maybe I have a projector screen and I have an up or a down situation that alters the acoustics in the room, doors open versus closed, curtain drawn, or I just want to have a situation where I'm A, B testing different settings. So I want a measurement where I want to set it to just be the Schroeder frequency that I'm um, calibrating to, or perhaps I'm limiting the calibration to perhaps 5 kilohertz as opposed to all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Now, the good news is that Pretty much all the major players in the room correction arena support multiple profiles. So if I'm talking Anthem's Arc Genesis, I'm talking about Odyssey, Dirac, Trinov, etc., you can do it with all of them. Now, I want to make a point to sensitize us that there are two kinds of calibration profiles. The first is that I've done a single measurement. And then what I'm doing is I'm making a clone of that measurement, whether that's the five or eight measurements that I've done with, with a microphone. And then I'm making changes to that measurement, like I'm enabling or disabling some speakers, I'm changing crossovers, uh, base settings, the correction range, etc. And then the second kind of calibration profile would be if I'm doing a new or an entirely new set of microphone measurements. So I'm moving the main listening position, let's say, to the second row. That's my first measurement. And then I'm doing five or eight measurements around that row or that area. Now, how do you create different room correction profiles? Well, let me take you through two simple examples with the setups that I use in uh, my house. 
The first is using Anthem's Arc Genesis. And Anthem Arc Genesis, as I mentioned, does those two features, whether I want to make a clone, so you can go and you can enable, and then you select the measurement to use. So that can either be an existing measurement, or you can do an entirely new calibration, and then select up to um, four different measurements that you could do, and then you can name each calibration uh, profile called a speaker profile. The next thing that you can do is you can individually on a profile by profile basis set which speakers you want active and then you can fine tune the particular setting. So if I want to increase or decrease the room gain, um, the crossover, I want to have different settings for deeper bass, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, you can do all of those things on a profile by profile basis. Now what's nice with Anthem products uh, using Anthem Room Correction is that all Anthem AVR and Pre-Pros allow you to create virtual inputs. And with a virtual input, what you can do is you can have the same source. And here's what's really cool is you can assign a different Arc Genesis profile on an input by input basis, even if it's the same source. So one example might be, hey, I have an Apple TV 4K. And what I'm going to do is I want the arc setting for that particular input to be my Atmos movie calibration. So I've, I've increased the base by, let's say, 6 dB. So I can call that input ATV 4K Atmos. The second thing might be, hey, I have an Apple TV 4K, but now I've been bumped to the second row. Gene Delisalle, like say, that's when my mother-in-law comes to visit and she takes my, my first row seat. So you can call that second row. And now what you've done is a completely new measurement with the seat in the second row being the main listening position. And you can assign an arc profile to that input. The third might be you want to have a late night. So you could have a, a late night setting with attenuated bass. Um, or you, if you um, have, let's say, a UDP, a universal displayer like an OPPO, you could have a movie setting that, again, has your Atmos, um, your ARC settings for Atmos movie. You could have your second row setting, and then you could even have a two-channel setting if you're using Rune or you're using it as a network streamer. So with ARC and with Anthem products, simply by switching the input, automatically applies that custom room correction profile. So it's easy, it's simple, it's neat, and you just do it right from your remote control. With Odyssey, Odyssey once again allows you to do multiple profiles, but there are three different ways that you can do it with Odyssey. The um, first is, and we're talking here primarily with uh, Denon and Morant AVR and Pre-Pros, is if you purchase the multi Q Editor app, you can do either clones or new calibrations. Then you get these profiles uh, on your smart device. You can then clone them, you can rename them, and then you can do uh, customizations to the curve. Then when it comes time to, let's say, hey, I'm going to have a um, listening session, I'm going to have the doors open to the area, I just select my door open calibration, I just click on it, I press the upload button, select the AVR, and in a matter of about 20 to 30 seconds, that calibration profile has now been loaded and it's applied universally to all the inputs where I have uh, Odyssey applied. So I can do that on a case-by-case -case basis with the multi Q Editor app. The second use case is using Odyssey's multi Q X app for PC. This is just a phenomenal tool. I love multi QX. I've been using it now since it's been launched with my uh, Denon uh, X8500 HA. And again, you can do either the clone or brand new calibration, and you can really fine tune how you want the frequency response to be the curves and uh, all the different settings. The drawback is you got to open up your PC, you have to select the profile that you want and upload it to your AVR. It takes a little bit longer than the app. And then the third option for Denon and Marantz models, and these are for, if I'm not mistaken, it's for the 2020 and newer models, uh, the newer platforms, that they have a preset one and a preset two feature. And I'd like to think this is thanks to Audioholics. Uh, Gene and I had gone down to New Orleans uh, many years back and we sat with the Denon and Marantz engineers and we said, what we really want is the ability to do multi -ca multiple calibration profiles and voila, we've got it. So all you have to do is press 
option, uh, get that option menu up and running, use the arrow keys to select speaker preset, and then you can select preset one or preset two based on which calibration profile you've loaded there. With this option, you're limited to just two presets, which for most folks should be just fine, but it's a quick and easy, dirty way to do it just with the remote control. So in summary, calibration profiles, they're great. And using calibration profiles makes it easier than ever to optimize your listening environment. So let's remember, speakers and rooms are a single integrated part of audio reproduction. You can't separate the two. Multiple calibration profiles empower you to optimize your system for changes in the main listening position, bass preferences, physical room changes, speaker configurations, or testing different measurements that you want to do. So if this is important to you, then be sure to look to an AVR or pre-pro solution that features multiple calibration profiles. And the great thing is all the major solutions do that and the major manufacturers, Anthem, Denon, Marantz, etc., they all support that. And don't forget our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You'll get direct access to us, you can ask questions, and you can even suggest topics for future programs. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this section on room correction profiles. If you're using room correction profiles in your setup, please leave some comments below and let us know how are you using them, what benefits you may have found. It'll be a great discussion, and I'm sure it'll be a great aid to some other enthusiasts as well. So, until next time. Keep listening.